that dark sky site, relatively dark. And uh, it looks pretty clear. There's just a couple clouds moving through. It's supposed to be really clear tonight. I'm um, trying to get the, the video log of this uh, trip. It's only about an hour drive out west uh, from the big cities um, at a park. And uh, as you can see, I got all my gear. There's my scope. I got some Trader Joe's for snacks and refreshments. And we're making decent time. There's uh, some traffic. It's rush hour. It's about 5.54 p.m. It's important to plan your session. Once you've identified the target you want to image, you should definitely take a look at it online or on a downloadable free software such as Stellarium. Download Stellarium for free. It's a great program. You might already have it. It's a virtual sky. You can look at everything in the sky from any location on the planet or almost any time and in history and into the the near or relatively far future even. So uh, right now it's daytime and uh, and that's why I'm inside here on this program instead of out in the field. So let's fast forward to like a little after 10 p.m. and um, let's see here. So here's due north and I've uh, selected the meridian line to be displayed on the sky and uh, let's suppose you want to consider imaging something like the elephant's trunk nebula. So it's over here. It's about 26 and a half degrees above the horizon at 1020. Typically you want to wait till it's about 30 degrees or more so that you're not looking through too much atmosphere. But anyway, hit this button up here boom this red rectangle that is what the size of my picture would be with an 8 inch f 4.9 newtonian reflector and the teleview paracord 2 which has a 1.15 barlow and the zwo asi 1600 and so if you slide it over here you'll notice the elephant trunk is very nicely framed uh, you can hit the little monkey wrench over here and look at some general ocular features if you're using an eyepiece. The eyepiece is you could save in here. Lenses, I have a couple Barlows that I, uh, I use these only with my Dobsonian, my 14 inch. And here are the three cameras I'm using. This is my guide camera. I also use it as a um, planetary imager with my Dobsonian. My DSLR and my 1600 are right here. But one thing I want to bring your attention to is this rotation angle. If you were to play around with it, you can uh, you could sort of play with the the framing, right? So you could figure out what um, when you're out in the field how you want it to be framed up. Here's 90 degrees. That doesn't work very well because it's uh, the, the long axis of the elephant's trunk is on the short axis of the frame. So I, I found that 26 is pretty good. If you do zero, it's, I don't know, it just looks a little flat. Like it's parallel to the long axis. It's, I don't know, it's just not as interesting. I found that if you, if you put it just a little bit diagonal, it just makes it a little bit, uh, it has more pizzazz. It just, it looks better, I think. That's just me. You can hit this button to minimize, and you can actually also go to this website called telescopius.com, and it's also a really great tool, quick and easy, if you have internet access for framing and planning. So here's the elephant trunk again, and they got these uh, inspirational quotes down here. 
um, here it is and you can just drag and, and move the the field of view over again I have saved the ASI 1600 in here I also have my DSLR and my planetary and then you just want to put your telescope focal length in there and you could uh, you could rotate the camera angle using this slider bar here so if you go to about 27 degrees you'll see again like we saw in the in Stellarium it's nicely framed when it's kind of along the diagonal and so uh, this is this is a great tool the thing that's uh, more advantageous uh, about Stellarium over the website is you could use the the scroll uh, feature on your mouse, the little scroll wheel, to zoom in and out of the sky. And you can see the whole sky. And just zoom out. You can drag and drop onto different parts of the sky. You could, it's easier to explore the sky um, very quickly in real time with Stellarium. This one is if you want to just focus on one object, uh, one tar uh, target, and you can also put eyepieces in there with different focal lengths and whatnot. Good idea to stop when you get to the excellent range of polar align error. Don't get too greedy. I, uh, I've had it down to like three arc seconds before and sometimes I try to um, get it to that level again, but eh. Anything that's in the excellent range is, well, excellent. Alright, so just a few tips when you're uh, trying to troubleshoot your auto-guiding. Do you see how my right ascension and declination are both 0.19 and this one's 0.20? So that means, like, they're almost exactly the same in terms of their current RMS error. But if you look over here... I have the RA aggressiveness at 75 and the declination aggressiveness at 90, so they're quite different. Now that's something that I ended up um, setting. I, I changed it so that the RA aggressiveness and deck aggressiveness settings are optimizing the RMS error along those axes. Sometimes you want to you wanna think about how your mount might be fighting the weight, even if it's relatively well balanced, how it's fighting the weight. So it could be sort of uh, trying to like fall almost, like gravity is torquing it downwards on the nose end, the front end of the telescope. And so you would, um, you would notice, um, depending on the orientation of your telescope, that could be uh, along the declination axis or the right ascension. So you just have to sort of w keep that in mind and look at what your configuration is and keep track of your guiding. So here's my auto guiding. It's doing pretty good. We got 0.27 RMS for uh, the total between the declination and right ascension. So anyway, something to think about. You can't really see it that well except for around the moon, but we got clouds all over the place. Like this entire half the sky is 100% cloudy. And where I'm imaging, I'm right, <laughs> right now I'm shooting between two clouds. So, oh man. I don't know if I'm going to get any usable data. Right now I have one frame that might be usable. One. I'm going to stick it out for a while. Stay here for another few hours. We'll see how it goes. But gosh, this is how it goes in this craft. Astrophotography, man. Like, you got to just roll with it. Nature's going to do what it's going to do. It's rough out there. So it is about 3 a.m. and it's just been pretty much cloudy all night. Like, I don't really know what I'm doing out here anymore, <laughs> at least tonight. But uh, I'm shooting through the clouds. Um, I got a handful of images in each channel through the clouds.
So I don't know. We'll see how it turns out. Some astrophotography, a little bird head, a bird brain. I don't have enough food. I don't think they want to get too friendly with me, but they are pretty cute little birds, though. How's it going? <laughs> 